Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Conferences like this, I would always observe, they are feasts of light. So here's how it works. Since light is the conveyor, revelations create transitions in the spirit. Every time you access light, it stops you from remaining at that level. It is a vehicle that translates you to higher levels and dimensions in the spirit. Are we learning now? And so conferences like this give us an opportunity to receive different dimensions of light that build us, equip us, so that with accuracy and precision we can press towards our kingdom adventure. Conferences like this close the gaps in our spiritual understanding so that there is no haziness. The Bible says, he that strives for mastery is not crowned. Is not, um, crowned until he strives lawfully hallelujah let your light come oh god and grant us access in jesus name please be seated i have five revelations that the lord placed in my heart to bring to us i brought four yesterday and this morning will be for the final one but let me do a very quick recap yesterday i taught on the river of life and um, there are four important things I said yesterday that is important I remind us number one that there are three gifts that everyone receives at the point of salvation that when you encounter Jesus Christ at the new birth experience there are three gifts number one is called the forgiveness of sin do not forget this number two the gift of righteousness and then number three abundant life or zoe as we call it you must be conscious of these threefold blessings the forgiveness of sins the the gift of righteousness and abundant life the second thing i said yesterday is that abundant life or we call it life through his son is the greatest of all these three gifts the gifts are powerful but they are not all equal in value the greatest gift god gave man is not the forgiveness of sin it's not even the gift of righteousness it is his life are we together now and i define for you that life here according to john 10 10 is not just the ability to exist without dying it is not just about being alive i told you that life here is the summation of every component that upgrades a man to the god class you still remember so when the bible talks about life you have to understand bible mentality in describing life he's not just talking about biological life he's not just talking about a life better than what we have it is a quality of life in fact um, John puts it as eternal life and it's translated in English eternal life but um, it's not an accurate translation because the, the, the suggestion eternal just means forever living it is not a quality you need to believe us all men have eternal life uh, because beyond this life we still exist whether with God or in eternal damnation so the concept of cessation of living does not exist it is only to be absent in the body but non-existence is not a concept that exists are we together now everything is alive it's just in another phase and another dimension so when we preach we ask people where do you want to spend eternity the question is location not possibility whether you are lazarus or you are the rich man you will be somewhere and you'll be alive there so the life God gave us is not necessarily eternal. That's not the, it's, it's a quality of life, not just the longevity of it. Are we learning now? 
It's a quality of life imputing in you every component that is in the Christ that upgrades you to the God class. And I did tell us yesterday that the striking difference between humans and animals is not necessarily their body frame because there are animals that are infinitely bigger than humans. It's not even their speed. It is the quality of life. That means when Satan comes to attack an individual, what he's looking for is attacking every component in your life that makes you become an expression of God in experience. Hallelujah. It's very important that we understand this. Fellowship with God, we said, for instance, wisdom, intelligence, abundance, power, health, and vitality. These are all the components that summed together is called life. Hallelujah. The fourth thing or the third thing I told us yesterday is that the Holy Spirit is both the conveyor and the administrator of the life of God. It's important we understand this. The Holy Spirit is the conveyor. That means when you receive the life of God at the new birth experience, I know we generally say Jesus has come to your heart and you are right, but um, theologically speaking, the personality that comes to represent the life of Jesus in honor to that prayer is the Holy Spirit. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father as a person. Are we together? The Holy Spirit answers to his name. He honors that prayer by coming. He's a representation of the life of God. So I'm saying that he is both the conveyor and the administrator of the life of God in man. Romans 8 and verse 2 calls him the spirit of life. It was at that point yesterday that we introduced this name of the Holy Spirit as the spirit of life. And in John chapter 7, 37 to 39, Jesus said out of our bellies, he was speaking at the last day of the feast, that out of our bellies will flow rivers of living water. Still remember that? When we get to verse 39, the Bible says, This spake he of the Holy Ghost. So he was not just speaking about a literal river. It was a metaphor describing the life-giving ministry of the Spirit. Again, it was a metaphor. The flowing river was a metaphor describing the life-giving ministry of the Holy Spirit. The life-giving ministry of the Holy Spirit is described in that metaphor of a flowing river. And we examine a few operations, life-giving operations of the Holy Spirit. We saw that the Holy Spirit is responsible for fruitfulness. He shall be like a tree, Psalm 1 verse 3, that is planted by the riverside. The basis for the fruitfulness is the fact that it was planted and its encounter with that river. We saw restoration as in Isaiah 41 verse 18, the life-giving ministry of the Holy Spirit. We saw renewal and hope. I will pour water upon him who is thirsty. Isaiah 44 and verse 3. We saw peace. You still remember this? Yes. That peace is part of the life-giving ministry of the Holy Spirit. We saw righteousness and justice, the administration of righteousness and justice as the life-giving ministry of the Holy Spirit. And we prayed yesterday asking the Lord to grant us access to this life-giving ministry. Now, for today, well, I'm speaking very briefly on life-giving spirits, still extending my teaching yesterday, life-giving spirits. So we'll start today from John 7 again, where we left off yesterday. Jesus was speaking and he said on the final day of the feast, verse 37 now, he said, if any man thirst, any man at all, any man thirst, he says to come and to drink. And then he says, verse 38, that out of his belly shall flow. Take note. Out of his belly shall flow rivers. Now, literally, that does not make sense because 
a river needs space and yet he's saying there's something within a man are we together now as frail as we are that rivers can flow to us and the bible says this spake he of the holy spirit he was speaking of the holy spirit the holy spirit has a twofold operation generally speaking as a life-giving spirit the first dimension of his operation is within the believer and the second dimension of the believer is from or through the believer two operations of the spirit as far as the administration of life is concerned so he flows through you doing the work of transformation doing the work of empowerment when you are transformed and empowered you get to that realm of overflow and he now flows out from you to the nations please note this when the holy spirit comes he does not flow he fills you first it is when you are filled that overflow begins are we together now it is very important you know that because there are many people who receive the holy spirit and the next thing they want is to be used of him that's not how he works when he comes as a life-giving spirit his first assignment is not the witness it is the vessel there is something he does to the vessel to make that vessel worthy of being a witness are we learning now so the mistake that many believers make is on their encounter with the holy spirit all they want is to be used be used in ministry be used in business be used as ambassadors and witnesses that's not how the economy of heaven works when the holy spirit comes his next assignment or his major assignment for a long period of time is an inner walk in the believer ephesians chapter 3 from verse 16 to 20 when you read you see that do we have it projected the bible says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit where in the inner man in the inner man so there is a work he's doing in you he comes to your life and for a very long time you would not see any fruit happening in terms of your witness because there is his assignment is building the vessel now let me tell you the truth to the degree to which you allow him build you that is the degree to which the river will flow efficiently the flow of the river is interrupted by the quality of the vessel that hosts that river so when it looks as if the river is not flowing effectively to the nations it is not that the potential of the river has been subdued it is that the channel has not been well prepared and equipped are we together in desiring the river to flow our focus should not be the river our focus should be the channel i came in yesterday and there was a lot of rain in lagos the problem is not the water the water is an advantage the reason why it seemed to punish a lot of people with all due respect is that something is wrong with the channel system am i right on that that means if you you cannot stop the rain from coming it was designed to come it will come in its capacity your farm is praying for it but your roads ate it the reason is not because the water is bad are we learning now so the business of this flowing river this let it flow concept is a command but the focus is not the water the river the spirit he has been ever efficient he is god the major problem interrupting the flowing of the river is the quality of the vessel we do not allow him to do that inner work the work of transformation so the bible says in a great house there are various kinds of vessels they are called vessels but their capacities and the quality of their delivery is not the same there are vessels of clay of wood of silver and gold here's what the bible says some vessels by their alignment they are unto honor 
and some vessels are unto dishonor it says if a man will purge himself that man will become a vessel unto honor meat for the master's use hallelujah the work of transformation when the holy spirit comes into the life of a man a believer that work of transformation what is transformation i will tell you transformation is the name given to the process that makes you become like christ in experience it is the name given to the process is a journey with the holy spirit through his word cleansing renewing purifying you until you become an expression of the christ in reality perhaps i should say this please lend me your attention for one minute at the point you receive eternal life what part of you is saved because it is not all of you man is tripartite by design it's important for you to know the initial part of you that is affected by that salvation the imputation of eternal life is an entirely spirit affair are we together your mind is still as unfruitful as you were before you came to the altar so when the holy spirit comes his next assignment is to filter that life through the gates of your mind because your mind will become a useful tool in partnership with your spirit for being a witness now most believers do not allow that ministry continue because our theology of receiving the holy spirit is that once you can pray in tongues we believe you are done no that is supposed to be a it's like the ability to pray in tongues is like a it's like a sound check to be sure you are okay for the work to start you know how you do a sound check on a mic it doesn't mean the program is finished you are doing a sound check to make sure that everything is working well so your praying in the spirit is like a spiritual sound check all right now you have received all the tools for your transformation i can tell you the difference between any two believers in terms of the, their capacity in the spirit and the quality of delivery taking advantage of the investment of the spirit is not necessarily the election of grace it's not necessarily the will of god for the same lord is rich unto all it is the degree to which they have allowed this inner workings of the spirit as that river walks within you building character walking upon your mind helping you in experience to access the mind of christ because your mind is a gateway the possibilities in the spirit flow through your mind and to the degree to which your mind is scripture compliant the degree to which your mind is healthy here's what the bible says it says let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus the major part of the believer's journey is not manifestation is transformation the quality of your manifestation depends on the excellency of your transformation. Let me say that again. The quality, the efficiency of your manifestation, the efficiency of your witness is predicated upon the quality of your transformation. Are we learning? So, watch this. We have to build us save the same day same measure of the spirit let's say mentored under the same man of god but you may find out that one would have such a rich and compelling christian experience in terms of his results and his witness whereas another person you almost doubt whether that person is saved i can tell you the difference the difference is the space they have both given the Holy Spirit to flow through based on their level of transformation. If you say you love God, you don't sing it. You yield yourself to be transformed so that you become a greater host of his possibilities. This is what Jesus was saying. That if any man thirst, so it starts from you. There must be an awareness that you are thirsty. Let him come and drink and that when he drinks, the Holy Spirit becomes first within him, that river. When you are filled to overflow, then he begins to flow through you to the nations. Our witness is ineffective because we have not placed so much value on the inner work of the Spirit. Please listen to me again. 
our witness is ineffective the reason why it looks like there are a handful of people scattered across the globe doing exceptional things as far as the witness is concerned is not God's predeterminate counsel. The cry of Jesus when he walked upon the earth is that the laborers are few. He said your intercession should not even be for the harvest. The problem is not the harvest. The problem is the inefficiency of the laborers. He said when you pray prioritize praying for the laborers nothing is wrong with the harvest it is the strength of your sickle that determines the 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 the, the wheat is obedient if the sickle is sharp if you struggle at the field it is simply because your witness is poor acts 4 33 with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus christ and great grace was upon them all are we learning already this is very important that the life-giving ministry of the holy spirit is not just to make you a witness he makes you an effective vessel and let me submit to you that journey is the most painful journey in every believer's journey the journey of transformation because that journey will kill many things before bringing others alive did you hear what i said it is a very painful journey because it is a journey of death jesus said there is a relationship between death and glory he said except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies it abides alone when the farmer is throwing seeds he does not hate the seed he wants a harvest but the first thing that happens to the seed is not fruitfulness the first thing that happens to the seed is death when the farmer comes and sees the seed decaying he does not cry he knows that out of that death life is coming are we together the life giving ministry of the holy spirit will look like death for a long time until life comes i pray you understand what i'm teaching you because our theology about God is what affects our ability to yield or otherwise. If you do not know that the journey to being a prepared vessel takes a while, it will take the deadening of many things. There were things in your mind, there were components that were antichrist before God met you. He's not going to use you the way you are. You come as you are but you have to yield for transformation and because he's not a demon spirit he will not force transformation on you so there is no time allotted for your transformation it is your yieldedness that defines the time for someone in one year he can yield to such a degree that great power and grace is emanated from that person for another your yieldedness becomes so slow it's almost as if the holy ghost is not in you hallelujah most of the people who become effective witnesses were not even conscious of manifestation they stayed and said God build me build me to become the vessel that can host that river how many of you have seen a dam pure poorly built and sometimes because the dam is poorly built it can cause catastrophe when you fill it with water you need to study the architecture that is deployed in building a dam because of the quantity of water it takes are we together the engineers have to go through the rigor of building sometimes it takes as much as six years and the problem is not lack of funds it is like that they have to allow certain concrete to stay they test they stress test they do it again and again but when that dam is built and water comes when they want to open it officially to flow you dare not stand the way of that river it will sweep anything before it because of the quality of the dam ladies and gentlemen hear me this message does not stop with the holy ghost the greater responsibility of let the river flow is the vessel are we together now so i told you that the holy spirit has a twofold work as far as his life-giving ministry is concerned number one is the inner work of transformation and empowerment don't forget this transformation and empowerment and there are enhancers to that ministry number one 
is called the ministry of the word the transforming the transforming and empowering ministry of the holy spirit does not happen outside of the word transformation depends on the word so you must submit yourself to the ministry of the word number two you must submit yourself to prayer this is the apostolic model that was used by the church in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 the Bible says and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and in fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayer that was a model that was handed over to them that in seeking to enjoy the life-giving ministry of the Holy Spirit that ministry of transformation and empowerment the prerequisite is that you must submit yourself to the ministry of the word you must submit yourself to the ministry of prayer Acts chapter 6 and verse 4 but we will give ourselves continually continually to the to prayer and the ministry of the word someone say prayer please shout again say prayer say the ministry of the word that means every time you submit yourself to prayer the study of the word reading books engaging in quality christian materials you are working in partnership with the holy spirit do that work of transformation you are giving him the tools that he will use to birth that transformation as you invest time in prayer there is a purging there is a purifying there's no time to teach you the assignment of prayer but according to scripture there are four assignments of prayer in the life of the believer the primary assignment of prayer is for growth and transformation Luke chapter 9 and verse 29 the Bible says and as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glycerin beyond obtaining requests a major part of the prayer ministry is like how a snake molds you mold into a superior version of yourself in the place of prayer a weak you becomes a strong you a fearful you becomes a courageous you man can mold into another kind of version in the place of prayer are we learning now transformation by the word Acts chapter 20 and verse 32 and now brethren I commend you to God and to the word of his grace the Bible says which is able to build you up and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified among them that are sanctified to build you up and give you an inheritance that means among them that are sanctified not everybody is built and not everybody has access to this inheritance but among them who are sanctified it is those who receive the word they are built and they receive an inheritance the ministry of prayer and of the word listen to me the ministry of prayer and the word is not limited to preachers so many people have this narrative that until you discover that you are suddenly called into an apostolic or prophetic or pastoral ministry then you carry it as a necessary luggage to be serious with the word of God and to be serious with the ministry of prayer it was never so it was the model that is how people become great in the spirit are we together now it's a non-negotiable condition that any believer who does not choose as an act of your will to submit to the ministry of the word and to submit to prayer you have incapacitated the life-giving ministry of the Holy Spirit so he can be in you but can be as inert as anything you cannot see the potential these are the kinds of people that you doubt whether they are saved powerlessness is present lack of wisdom is present no transformation the only thing is that you saw them when they were confessing jesus that's the only reason why you still believe they are saved transformation by the word as you engage in prayer something is happening to you there is the mind of Christ the way he thinks the way he analyzes life the way he sees things your mind is being renewed and upgraded in the ex in experience do you know the primary assignment of the prince of this world is not even to attack the saints it is to blind them 
to work on something about your mind because even if satan does not exist if all the demons today decide to go on break for one year the saints will still fail because satan is not the only limitation a greater limitation is your transformation in genesis 11 satan was not mentioned the holy spirit was not mentioned a healthy thinking was the only basis for rebuilding babel and god said he saw that what they had imagined nothing would stop them he had to confuse their language as a strategy to stop them satan is not the only enemy in fact he is already a defeated enemy you cast him away but you don't cast listen when it has to do with eroding ignorance you will have to submit yourself methodically to scripture it's not something you do in one day in one moment you can cast out a demon but you can't cast out ignorance you have to submit to the word of god line upon line precept upon precept here a little there a little until you are transformed are we learning now and you see let me tell you the truth this school of the spirit bar academically you can jump certain classes and read up a few weeks to the exam if you are really brilliant you can even get a but in the school of the spirit the class you miss you will pay for it whether in ministry or in destiny are we together now so when he's teaching you finance 101 and you are too busy you will be anointed but the day there is need for that lecture it will be evident you miss that class if he's teaching you character 101 and you are not there you can be anointed but the day life comes to test that lecture every lecture in the school of the spirit must be attended and in full 10 over 10 attendance if god wants to show you mercy and you did you jump that class you will do adult education but you won't be free you will certainly have to do that class again so what happens is he covers for you while quickly teaching you he exalts your name you see god helps men by making their name great but your your name being great is not the same thing as you being great your name being great is a perception of you while he trains you to quickly match up that level because it takes time to be great if your name is greater than you you are in trouble because proximity reveals flaws the closer people come they will see that you are not as great as that name so he gives you a great name he projects a great identity about you so that people come to you with honor and while they are celebrating that name he says let's walk let's deal with this so that by the time the nations come you have been formed if you get carried away by a great name and you don't stay with the spirit as people come closer it becomes clear that you were walking on reserve How did I get here? I'm teaching on the river, oh, river, river, river. Whose passion is tempting me? My God. Are we together? When he was blessing Abraham, he said, I will make your name great. Now, the advantage of having your name great is that others can ride on that name to be great. If you are great and your name is not great, your influence and your story dies with you. Are we together now? A good name is better to be desired than riches because a good name becomes a leverage. This is why Jesus gave us his name. He didn't just give us his life. He also gave us his name. He didn't say in my life they shall cast out demons. He said in my name. I know the lion I know the lamb I know the lion I know the lamb I believe in the lion I believe in the lamb I believe in the lion Shalabaka parado sabadeya listen for someone here you've been itching for ministry 
and God is saying just calm down just because you are called does not mean you are sent this is a prophetic word when God calls you he calls you to himself then he sends you to the nations I don't doubt your call but have you been sent the Bible says he called them that they should be with him then that he might send them because in being with him the maker makes you it's not only the heavens and the earth that he makes he will furnish you Saul becomes Paul Abraham becomes Abraham Sarai becomes Sarah are we together now that making he will purge your appetites he will purge your desires he will plant in you something you were not born with and by the time he's done occasionally in that training he will allow you to go for industrial practice so in the midst of that training you will go for a meeting somewhere you will see power like you have never seen then he says return to class it was just to show you to encourage you but many people immediately sign off their graduation after that first program and the deception is that people don't know whether you are being trained or not once they see you they say come again it is left for you to love your destiny enough to say I'm only on industrial training let me go back because there is a kind of river I want to flow Rina Simali Kapros Kabila Sobrandi Elena Sholagadi Balakosiata. Seven people. I'm seeing the number seven. I just saw light falling on those seven people. Sadabagabakatosiata. The Lord is calling you back to the place of making. You are made, but not enough. You are still under construction, not enough. You are Moses but not yet the deliverer. You are David but not yet my servant. I have found David but I am still looking for my servant. The one that oil will come upon is not David. It's my servant. There is a journey from David until you become my servant. He's calling you. Listen. For many. Please just help those under the anointing. Let's not be distracted. You see. There is no doubt that you are called. There is no doubt that the prophetic is there. But if you are really serious about effective witness, the key, we run in the kingdom by staying. We don't run by running. The secret of speed is to stay. The ability to stay is how we run. Why is God turning this meeting to a pastor's conference this morning? The capacity you have within the spirit is a degree to which a demand will be placed upon you. Hear me? Listen. The Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle, your strength is small. Why did Israel turn aside in the day of battle? Their strength was small. But there was a young boy where did he come from the secret of david is where he came from not his family place his place of training saul don't belittle my size in the wilderness a lion came there was no social media to announce it but i tore it i tore the bear i know what to do i didn't tear it by strength i tore it by covenant that is the basis of my defeating Goliath. And Goliath said, am I a dog that you come to me? He said, you come to me with your bows and your spears, but I come to you by a covenant. I was trained. I was furnished, forged from the furnace of affliction. I have capacity to bring you down, that I will throw you down by the sling, and I will use your own sword to cut off your head. Hallelujah. It is true that he called you into the healing ministry but please make sure you stay before you start calling the sick to come out because there is no mercy for unfaithful servants he gave one five talent 
two talent, one talent. He gave them enough time to go and learn about investment. The one with one talent would have learned from the guy with five. But anger and resentment made him to leave it there. And one time he came demanding stewardship. You are called to the healing ministry. Don't produce any poster yet. Stay till he walks on you. Let a grace come from heaven upon your life. That the day you call the sick with one manifestation of his power, you will ride like the river. The river rides with ease. It clears everything before him. The challenge with many believers is that our callings and our election is certain. But we have not given diligence to make our callings and our election sure. So there are many people wanting to do big things for God. But the capacity is small. You become a casualty on the journey to yourself and to all those who trust you. the spirit for one minute no distraction go ahead Hallelujah. Please be seated for one minute. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh. Yes, we look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Forever Yahweh. from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching